fresh and fit, stirring the pot as usual. But you know what they say, man? Controversy sells. So, at the beginning of the year, Asian doll, who? I said the same thing. Went on the Fresh and Fit podcast. Her and Myron Gaines had a little bit of a a, mac, a back and forth, you can call it, which resulted in Asian Doll getting Frank Castle. Asian Doll then, of course, put up a post on her page, you know, acting like she got super disrespected and how Myron Gaines is this and he's that. I mean, nothing new here, right? But what happened was because she has a you know somewhat of a you know large following this got picked up by shade room and once this got picked up by shade room some old clips resurfaced of fresh and fit talking down on black women what that did when that post that Asian doll did was reposted by Shade Room was get everybody's panties in a bunch. All the D-list blue checks chimed in on the Shade Room posts. They basically went through the ringer fresh and fit. So you had all these big name podcasts making videos and those videos got circulated and then you had all these people on these shade room posts in these IG comment sections and YouTube comment sections just talking just, just talking down on Fresh and Fit as usual I don't think Fresh and Fit can really be cancelled because their 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 base is really strong a lot of a lot of the things that they say resonate with a lot of people so The black woman clip surfaced. I have never seen so many people regurgitating the exact same talking points with their own YouTube videos. I've never seen so many people regurgitating the same old talking points underneath IG comments. In IG comments, I should say or within YouTube comments. The comments all sounded exactly the same. The posts that people were making, the videos that people were making sounded all the same. And I quote, it's okay to have a preference. I get it, but You don't go ahead and disrespect the whole race. People are saying the exact same thing over and over and over and over. I literally feel sometimes like I'm in the matrix. Like I'm in an episode of Black Mirror. Like I'm in some type of simulation. Somebody give me something different. So what happens? Enter Fair Gray. Enter Malik Zulu Shabazz. Fresh and Fit appeared on Fair Gray's Instagram Live. And if you don't know, you can always go do your research and know exactly who Fair Gray is. Long story short, Fair Gray is Khalid Muhammad's son. The late great Khalid Muhammad, RIP. Malik Zulu Shabazz is um, he's a lawyer and um, he works with the Justice League and Nation of Islam and he actually got denied from entering Canada one time he was supposed to speak in Toronto he got denied um, he ended up taking trying to get in through the Peace Bridge and he got denied again so you can do your deep dives on them when you get a chance but they're the offsprings of the um, Nation of Islam Malcolm X, Martin Luther King of that elk. So they will be considered the more um, intelligent black folk per se. But of course, when Fresh and Fit came on the live stream, so all four of them were on the live stream together, Fresh, Fit, 
uh, Malik Shabazz, Fair Gray. They're all out there together. And um, Malik Shabazz tried to come for fresh and fit, but he, he didn't really address both sides. My position is that the black woman's disrespect and rebellion against the leadership and the authority of the black man is the direct cause of the breakdown in our black family structure. Now, of course, there are many black people who consider those fighting words because as black women, we have never been subject to the kind of examination uh, that our men have been subject to since we have been here. We have been somewhat protected and shielded from any kind of critiquing about our personal behavior, whereas our men have always been up for examination. Um, the book is not an attack on black women. I have never said that all black women do everything that I list in my book. Uh, none of us have lived long enough to do everything that I list in the book, but uh, most of us do some of the things that I have listed in my book. And I do say that it is not because of generalizations that we are all victimized by some of the negative patterns of behavior in the book, but the book just represents our collective contribution. This is some of everything that we have done or that we do daily that contributes to the breakup of our relationship, the destruction of our man, and the failure of our children to be able to function. They did not tell us that all of that, uh, being my own person and I'm independent, would lead to separation, loneliness, celibacy, and lesbianism. They didn't tell us that if you give up the man, you're going to take one of these things and it's worse and it will destroy your nation. They didn't give us that information. They made us think that it was some kind of glorified position to brag about the fact that I got my own job, my own credit card, my own car, so I don't need no man. I don't even know how we got that mixed up. Ain't none of that got nothing to do with having being with no man. You know, you know we, we have some serious relationship problems that uh, nobody has been able to address us on because everybody wants to pretend that this is not going on. You know, over 60% of our women are single, widowed, separated, or divorced. They don't have a man. I just came out of Florida and they got a housing complex that the Urban League built, which is a black organization that is for women and children only. They, don't, they say they don't allow any men in there. I didn't have time to deal with it, but I talked about them real bad. That's the silliest program I've ever heard of. You know the women that had men if they got a bunch of children. They need fathers. They need protection. We hear about the drug problem that we have in our projects across the country. It's one of the major places that we have a drug problem. You know, we talk about the great strength that we have as black women. Well, the uh, welfare department don't rent government apartments to single black men. Those apartments belong to black women who are allowing this to go on in their home. We have not looked at what part of the responsibility do we share. Yes, black men sell a lot of drugs, and a lot of us black women get the money from them drugs and buy some of these fancy clothes we wear, drive around in some of these fancy cars. He is not doing these things alone and without support from us, whether they are good or bad. See, we have a lot of power. We are very strong women. I'm saying that we're using our strength in the wrong direction. We're using it to tear our man down, tear our nation down, instead of building it up. A, a lot of talking points have been missed in all of these videos that were made on YouTube, these posts on IG, and um, not talking about the ghetto, ratchet, toxic side of black women, right? But I'm here to focus a little bit more on the good or what you should be looking for. Okay, so number one, they got to love their dad. They got to have some respect for men in their life, either the man who brought them into their life or just men in their life in general. So if they can't have respect for the man who brought them into their life, then how are they going to have respect for you? Who are you? What could you do for them? You know, this person, somebody brought them into this world. Somebody gave them life. And if they don't have that person, if they don't give that person respect, how are they going to give you respect? So number one, they got to love their dad. They got to have some type of love for males who brought them into this world and or help them get to the point to where they are at in life. I'm not talking about some superhero person, some type of, you know, they love, um, you know, that guy from the Tyler Perry movie. No, nobody like that. No, not, not Idris Alba. Okay, not Michael B. Jordan. 
they can't love them they gotta love somebody more plutonic if that's the right word i don't know so that's number that's one point next point they gotta be able to cook that's a real turn on if a woman can throw down in the kitchen really well effortlessly that means that she can feed herself you don't gotta always be taking her out to eat or buying food and putting in all that trash into her into your bodies um she can potentially feed a family down the line which is really important as well too and she can maybe if you don't know how to cook very well she can help you to learn how to cook and if you already do know how to cook you guys could bond over cooking right so there's a whole that's a whole vibe right there you know you can always go to the grocery store together and you know learning new recipes and i mean you got to eat to live so it's a great way to bond if she knows how to cook really well even if you are or are not into cooking all right so another one i would say that's really important is um if she had a child young she had a child young um she may at this point not be seeking anything maybe just seeking a good time you know maybe just seeking a companion a friend an ear someone to talk to um might not try to trap you you know you're not looking at no drake situations where girls are putting hot you know girls drake has to put hot sauce in condoms and girls are trying to squeeze semen into themselves and you, I, I don't foresee you're lessening the chances of something like that happening if the person that you're dealing with you know already has a child or had a child really young right so she's probably a little bit more mature right so i would say look out for something like that all right so another one i would say is play some type of varsity level sports so if they played high level sports in high school high level sports in college or university that's really that's a really good sign so like a you know track and field um field hockey rugby volleyball that's a good sign that means that they're they're disciplined um attention to fitness uh team player um that's a good sign that's a good sign it's a good place to start so i would say the last one would be the hair the hair and it being natural you don't want too much artificial parts you don't want too much makeup too much fake eyelashes fake eyebrows fake hair fake body parts like fake breasts fake booty you don't want all that there's something wrong like, there has to be something going on upstairs if you're not completely happy with what god gave you one thing to just put on fake nails it's one thing to put on a little makeup here and there but if there's too much fake stuff going on you know something's going on upstairs and you don't want those problems in your life brother you know what i mean so those are the things those are the five things i would say to look for i don't see, i didn't really see anybody giving this type of list on the internet so i just said you know what let me just make one myself so those are the five things i would look for when selecting a black woman uh and you know best of luck in your search people there are good black women out here but a lot of them are really toxic as well too very toxic very 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 toxic so can mess up your whole life you know what i mean put you in a situation that you can't get out of whether it's a child who knows it could be anything right they could call they can call the three letter boys on you who knows so you gotta be very careful out here guys all right anyways omari styles see these balloons in the background i got those on my birthday check out my vlog that i just dropped that's the last video and we out